Hello friends, it's Dave here from Save Decks and we have been playing Picross S Mega Drive and Master System Edition or Genesis as it is in America. Uh, so basically I love Picross and this is just another really good Picross game. I've only played a few of up to here from now but I think that's enough to sort of be able to sort of showcase to you what this game is because I'm not reviewing this game. I'm going to be instead doing a how to play sort of video. For those who might not know Picross, uh, there is a demo available if you want to try it out and there is tutorials in this telling you how to do it. But I'm going to go a little bit further than that and instead of just showing you just how to play, which I will do now with a simpler course, which is Kid Comedian. This is what the puzzle is. Obviously if you haven't done the puzzle yet, it doesn't tell you what it is. Because obviously if you know what the picture is it's going to be easier to work out. But I'm going to go into one of the earlier ones and play this puzzle. And just quickly show you how Picross works. So you get a hint roulette which I'm not going to use. It just sort of tells you like a little hint at the beginning to help you out. So what you do is you've got these numbers on the top. That tells you how many tiles in this column. So there's a group of three, a group of two and then one on its own. And there'll be a gap in between the 3, the 2 and the 1. So on here there's a 5 and there's a 4. There'll, again there'll be a gap between that 5 and a 4 in this column. And the same with these rows. You've got a 9 in this row are uncovered. And there will we'll all be 9 next to each other. 10 next to each other. Then it's 5 next to each other. Then 3 next to each other and so on. And you've got to work out uh, what ones can be uncovered because of it. So if we go simply this row here has 10. And there are 10, so all of them are uncovered, we know that. And he basically works that and he's just like that. So I'm just going to quickly just show you. So if you don't think there's one somewhere, you press B and you put an X. And that's just something to say you don't think there's one there. You think there's a gap there and just little things like that. So on this row here, this top row, um, there's nine. So they have to be together. So we know that only one of these is an X. So because they have to be together, if it started here on the left, it would go up to this square here. And if it started here on the right, it would go up to that square there. So we know from that that these squares must be must be active. Uh, and one of these corners is not, but we don't know which yet. And then so this uh, column here um, has five, then a four. Now here we know 5 and 4 make 9, plus that one gap in the middle, um, that makes 10. There's 10 squares in this column, so we know we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then there's a gap, then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the only way that can be. So we're going to go onto the rows again now, so this bottom row, 2, 3, 1. So the 2 could be that and that, or it could be that and that. We don't know what side that two could be because the three and the one could still, there's a bit of versatility there. But, and again with this three, now if the three started here where I'm highlighting, it'll go one, two, three. So that would be one. But if it started here, it would go one, two, three. So either way, that one is active. So on this row here, we start off with a one. So there's one there, so the one can't be there because that would make a 2, and same with this one, it would make a 2, and we've got a 1. So it's a, a 2 and a 1 are still on this row, we don't know which. So going to this column now, we've got 5, then a 1. So again, like we were doing um, down here, the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it starts off with a 5. So if we go along these columns and then sort out where we know the first square's filled in, that's a 3, that's a 3, that's a two, that's a two, that's a three, that's a three. So we can close off these so we know they're threes. So that's basically how Picross works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the a harder puzzle that I have not yet done. And we're going to talk you through um, how I would solve it. Just so you can sort of get into my mindset of how it goes. So that's how you play the game. Let's just see some a more advanced level and how I'd strategize it. Okay, so I've just picked a random puzzle, number 53. I've no idea what this puzzle is, what the solution is, or anything. One thing I will point out is, I did say during the demo talk for this, it's a shame that there's no punishment. So Because I could just fill in like that, getting some of them wrong, obviously. 
And I said there was no punishment because it would tell you if you got one wrong. You can turn that feature off so it doesn't tell you that you got that you got it wrong. So you can just place the wrong one and just carry on working it out. So that is a good thing there. So what we'll do, we got a 15 by 15 grid. So there aren't any number 15, so there's no like rows or columns I can fill in instantly. So what I'm going to do first is look for the high numbers. So I can see a 13 here. So if 13 started there, it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It would stop there. And if it stayed started on the right hand column and counted along, it would stop there. So because of that, wherever this 13 starts and stops, these all have to be filled in. Okay, so also we've got some tens here at the top. Um, whether these start at the top or at the bottom, you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it would go from the top, the 10 would finish there. So I know that they have to be filled in. So again, so number 7 and 4 we've got on this one, that adds up to 11. So it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, space 1, 2, 3, 4. Or it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, space 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which you can't wait that. And there's a few few variants you can have there, but whichever way you look at it, the set, these three have to be filled in, whether the 7 starts here or starts there. But we don't know if that's a gap yet or not. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, look at, is we've got a 9 and a 4. So, it's, so the 9 would stop there, where I've highlighted, then a space, then a 1, 2, 3, 4. So if the 4 started there and ended there, or if the 4 started there, it would have to be filled in there. Then the space, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I did that wrong. So, uh, yeah, the 9 would have to stop there, but it could start there. Oh, no, wait. So, yeah, that, that, could, that has to be filled in. Which means, <laughs> now that I've filled these two in, the 10 from these two columns cannot be there because it wouldn't reach that far. 10 would stop there now. So, we're making a bit of progress here, and again, there's a 7 on this row to start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so they have to be filled in. And yeah, so basically, I'm just sort of talking my way through how I'm solving this. And okay, so this is an interesting one. This row that I'm on here that I'm going up and down on the left, you can see it says 3, and then there's 4 ones. So, this 2 here has to be part of the 3. But we don't know if the 3 is going to be there on the right hand side of it or on the left hand side of it. But either way, that one cannot be highlighted. So I'm going to obviously cross that out. And then basically I'm just going to keep... And the same with this one, look, that one can't be it. So um, yeah, I'm just going to basically... So hold, here, here we go, we've got a 5, a 7 and a 1. Uh, they add up to 13. But we've got two gaps which will make it add up to 15, won't it? So that has to be a 5 space that has to be a seven space space and then that has to be a one so we've solved that one that row's all done which means also the 10 from here has gone down another space which means these two can't be it and now this three on this row here that i'm doing these is only a space of two so those two can't be uh, hi highlighted so next thing we're going to look at, what should we look at next? Let's have a think. So here, on this column here, we've got a 5. Now, the 5 must be part of this one, and it's underneath this X, so that's the only place the 5 can be. Now that we've filled out the end of a column, the very left-hand side, we've got some numbers on the left here that we know that this is part of a 6, so it has to be there. This is part of a 7, so that has to be there. And this is part of an 8, so that has to be there. We'll close them off. So now we've done that, we've got... I'm just I'm noticing the columns at the top and how this affects that. So this column here, there's 5. And we've got a 5 there. I can cross that one off. And then we can fill out that 6. That's that column done. Now these two 10s I keep mentioning, they're done. So let's do that. This 7 here that I mentioned earlier, uh, it can't, they can't be there. So let's go down here, this 5 here is part of a 6, you can see at the top, so let's fill that in to make the 6. 
Now this seven and four here, the seven has to start here where I'm highlighting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's fill that out. So the four that we've got to the right of here are in these five squares. So these three have to be filled in. Right, we've made a bit of progress just from doing this little corner here. So let's go back to this column here. So we've got a three. See at the top here, three, five and one going upwards. So we've got a three. That has to be part of the five, but the one could be any one of these still. So we will not interfere with that yet. But on this row here, these three that I'm highlighting is a three, so that one can't be one. And let's take a look at another bit. So, you yeah, know, this bit here could be part of a one, could be part of a three. We don't know yet. But what we do know is this column here is we got the one there at the bottom then then we got a six so that would have to be one to be part of that six but the the six could end there it could end there we don't know yet so in fear but um if it did end there and we had a space one space one space one it still could be either way so i won't interfere with that but one thing i have noticed uh, if i can remember where i just noticed is, is on this row here we've got a five and a two one, two, three, four, five, space, one, two. So it has to be there, which means that six, I was right, it was there. And now on this row here, we've got a seven there. And that is also this col these columns done because we just had a one to fill in. And now where this 13 is, because I've had to fill those in, uh, it would have to be on this side here. Okay, so this column I'm doing here um, I notice there's a three at the bottom and we have this one on its own with a cross above it so these two have to make up that three and then above that is a five so that's one of them two three four five so that's closed off but then the two ones could be any of these still so this row here where we had the seven and the two threes we filled out this seven so then we got two threes to fill in and there's only one solution here so it's a three there and a three there so as you can see, you just go for the big numbers first, the ones that only have one possibility or very limited possibilities, ones that can guarantee you spaces, and then the rest just fills itself out. So this column I'm here, I've got a two here, I'm highlighting, and there's a seven above that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's cross that out. Okay, so now on this row here, we've done the three here, and there's a one there, let's cross that out. So we've got three more ones left, um, they could, there's a few possibilities still, so we won't interfere there. So, what I'm also going to do is, on this column here, we've got three together there, and three is the highest number, so let's cross that off, and that gives us that two that are here. So let's put a one there. I'll cry that because of that four, I'm going to highlight that, which means that can't be one. And then that's the two there. And then we've got the three, which has to fill out this row, so these can't be... Anything. So it is just as important to cross out the ones that can't be tiles as to uncover them because that really helps you out with a lot of these because now I know that there's a two there which would have to be that and there are no ones in this column which means that can't be one which means that the four has to end there and then the five has to end there so that's just helped me out a lot by doing that as a two there. Okay, so cross out that three. So the one from this row here could be in that one, could be in that one. We don't know yet. But we can also work out that that can't be one because of the two. And then there's a one and then a three in this column. So it's two, one, three, three going upwards. So that's the two. We've got two together there. So the one will have to be in there, which closes off this row as well. That's actually a very good shout there. So that's the three there, but the three, again, this last three on this column, uh, basically these middle two have to be tiles. So we're doing well. We've got, nearly, we've got the bottom half done nearly now, so that's pretty good. Okay, so on this column here, next to there's, there's a three and a two still left to uncover. We've got a two there, and we've got a, a two. That must be a two, so we'll close that off, which means the four from this row has to end there which has helped us out with this six and the five right hand column six then five we've got the five down here one two three four five six let's do that and then we've got a two for this row here 
and a two on the other side which has to start there okay then we've got a one we've got like four ones on this one which we can close off the end ones okay it's so then okay so now we've got these just this top area to work out now so what I'm gonna do is go from the bottom and look at what we know already so one two three four five six we need a seven there so that has to be one on this row this has to be they're all ones now so that's closed off that's closed off and that's that row done so we got two more ones to fill in on this row but there's still possibilities anywhere except I've noticed on this column here where I'm going up and down there's three ones to uncover the only way we can have three ones separately is to go like that so let's do that and block that one off and the same is true of this column here three ones that's the only way you can have them all separate so we've done that row now okay so we've got one that can still be any one of them still We've got a seven on this row, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So two of these can't be the seven, but those, because they have to be together, those two have to be there. Okay, I'm going to close that off because that has to be a one, which means that has to be part of the seven. We've just done the one for this column, so that closes off. Now, on the top row, we've got two twos to fill in. We've got one there and we've got one there and they have to be part of a two which means that can't be one but this column is complete anyway. So now that one's collect one's over there. This seven is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've closed off this column now which means the twos have to be there and there. The three for this column I'm on has to go in the middle there. So we'll close them off. We've got a three and a one on this row. So that will have to be the three. That will have to be the one. And I believe that is the puzzle done. Boom, there we go. Yeah, and it is a uh, site from Beyond Oasis Alley. And that is essentially how Picross works. There are other modes to this, which I won't go into just yet, but you can make a Picross. Basically, uh, gives you a harder version of Picross where uh, you, I'll just go into just one of these where Basically, the um, you see this nine that you've got here that's big. That means it's not a nine in just one row. It could be like the nine could look like that. Basically, nine together. So it is harder doing it like that. So it's basically on color across you. You have um, the colors. There's two yellows and one white on here. So I'm currently on yellow, so I know there's two yellows together. And you see how the ones at the top have gone, because I've done that. But you can also um, press the Y button to change what colour you're laying down. But the white, there doesn't have to be a gap though. The white could be there, it could be there, it could be there. The two yellows might not even be there. So that's basically how colour Picross works. So yeah, that's basically uh, the Picross. The clip Picross is basically the normal Picross, but you solve you make like little clips to make a larger picture uh, so that's just how that works so yeah overall uh, nine pounds this game eight pounds 99 very good game i love the music in it i just get so addicted to these cross puzzles i cannot wait to dive into them a bit further so thank you so much for watching this one i hope you guys followed this all right so um yeah hopefully you now know how to play across you know how to strategize and um, i'll see you in the next one everyone thank you for watching goodbye